but this is probably something you'd recommend for my Mark 1 MX-5. It's alive. Hello and welcome back to How They're Made. And today we want to talk about dampers. Now there are companies all around the world that make these things. You might have probably heard of Olin's or perhaps Bilstein. And we're at Nitron to see how they put together a damper. But before we do any of that, what does a damper actually do? So to give us a damper 101, what better man to be joined by than Guy? You are the founder of Nitron. First question, what is the job of a damper? The job of a damper is to control the energy that you've put into your vehicle. So what the shock does is it actually takes the energy that you've put into the spring and it extracts it slowly and turns it into heat inside the oil in the shock. The shock will often hold the spring and it's called a coilover when it looks like that. And what happens when you compress the shock, at the end of this rod here, there is a piston. The piston will move through the oil and the action of pushing it through the oil will put energy into the oil by heating it up, forcing that oil through the piston. When the piston is compressed down inside the shock, it then has to come back again, and more oil has to pass through the piston to the other side, and again, more energy is used. So the energy is taken out of the spring and put into heat into the oil itself. Inside this particular shock, you'll see there's the piston, the rod, and down inside here, there's a floating piston, and the floating piston has got gas on the other side of it. So this one here, the gas is contained in the bottom, this has got an external reservoir and there's gas in the top of the reservoir there. There's a floating piston here and it's free to float around. And then there's solid oil all the way through here. And there you've got a valve which you can control the flow of oil. With this one, we've got one valve. It's controlled up here and it controls the flow of oil in both directions at the same time. By having the reservoir, we can put a valve in the way and that allows us to have this valve controlling the speed that the shaft comes out, and this valve controls the speed at which the shaft goes in. Even with the more complicated road cards that are coming out now with electronic suspension, it's really not even as complicated as this. It's just having an electric screwdriver, pretty much, changing the settings. Whereas this is a multi-adjustable, multi-geometry capable product <coughs> where you've got camber and caster capability here. So you can see you've got the ability to change the camber, the way the wheel sits vertically, and the caster is the way the wheel sits back in the arch. And as you turn and steer, more caster will build more camber, and it's changing the combination of those two things. So this is probably something you wouldn't recommend for my Mark 1 MX-5. Most probably not. I'd, uh, I'd, I'd go for something like this. It's got a V6. But... Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe. So Guy, these mm. are monotube dampers. There are also twin tube dampers. Tell me the differences. A monotube damper means that the tube that you see is the only tube in its construction. So on the other side of the wall of this metal here, there is the piston. The bigger the piston, the more control you have in a competition environment. A twin tube product, inside the tube that you see here, there's another tube and it will by necessity be smaller and there's a gap between the two tubes. Now the twin tube product is normally what you'd find on a lower cost production vehicle. The twin tubes are easy to make, they're quite forgiving in their manufacturing tolerances but they don't care too much about heat buildup. they don't care too much about dissipating the energy and they don't care too much about getting the biggest piston that they can get inside a given package. Having the smaller piston, the smaller tube inside the outer tube is, is just a cheaper cost option. And so that's why you'll usually find it on a road car. Perfect, right. Well, that's a, a quick 101 on how dampers work. Let's have a look how dampers are made. And now a quick word from this week's sponsor, Cover. Cover is the greatest app for fast and flexible short-term insurance. Have you ever wanted to insure yourself on a mate's car just to take it out for a spin? Cover offers fully comprehensive temporary car insurance from as little as one hour, and it only takes minutes to get insured. All you need to do is download the app, complete your profile, and select how long you'd like to get insured for. Just bear in mind they can't cover modified cars. It's also the perfect way to get drive away insurance, so hit the link in the description and make sure you have the app ready on your phone. If you're a new customer, then you can get £10 off your first policy using the code COVERNOW.
So I'm here with Mike, who's going to explain exactly what's uh, going on here. So this is where the, the dampers really start their production life. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and what are we looking at here? You've got an example of different sub-assemblies we've got here. Um, that is a um, compression assembly, which is basically the mechanism that controls the compression damping in the two and three-way dampers. And you can actually relate that to the remote reservoir canister and with the compression sub-assembly in there as well. And then you've got the hose fitting on there, because this particular one has a hose to the main damper. Just in that alone, you are probably looking at about 20 components. So that's a gland, basically. You may notice that's the, the, basically the end of the body of the damper where the piston rod comes out. Within that gland, there are various seals and you've got O-rings which seal the, the gland actually into the body. And then you've even got on this particular one, there's, there's a bearing in there, which the piston rod runs on, and there's actually a rubber internal bump stop. On the other side of the assembly area, order forms come in, showing exactly what parts are needed for the next build. We've got the body tubes for the dampers, um, then you've got the reservoir, and then you've got the piston rod, and obviously the springs. Piston rod assembly comes first, with the gland, compression assembly, bump stop and end die attached to the rod. OK, so here we have some piston rod assemblies. This is the guts we're looking at. Absolutely, here. yeah. That's the that, really yeah, important stuff. The important part, yes. Now we've got an adjuster. This one is being, a, again, a two or three way damper. That then goes into the body assembly. And again, this has got some of the sub assemblies that you saw before. You've got the body tube, uh, reservoir tube, we saw, and end eye with the bearing in. And that then basically then slots together there. The completed part is inserted into the damper body with a snap ring used to keep the gland in place. Once the end cap is screwed in place, the damper is treated to a vacuum bleed, then filmed with oil on one side of the separator piston and compressed nitrogen gas on the other. It's alive. So after the damper is bled and filled, what comes yep. next? Next we need to dyno this just to make sure it's doing what it should, should do. Um, and then we, we will need to calibrate the adjustment. Now this one looks uh, a little bit smaller. I'm guessing this is for a it's, motorbike rubber car? It is, exactly, yeah. Let's go and get it dynoed. Okay. A dyno and calibration test is up next, after which point I'm allowed to get involved. So Pete here is going to uh, talk me through my moment of glory. What's first? I'm guessing this washer? So the washer on there helps the platform rotate. Next, the spring. Yep. Very careful. Hold on the top. So what we'll do here is we'll measure the preload. That is 14 mil. So from there we can then compress the spring. That sounds like something someone who actually knows what they're mm. doing should probably take care of. We'll then put on a retaining snap ring. So that just goes over, clip in, and we just relieve the pressure off. And that's it, we have yeah. one complete damper. Here comes yeah, our here. finished damper. With the damper given a final inspection, all that's left to do is box it up and dispatch it directly to a customer, a supplier, or an OEM such as Lotus. So there we have it. Now you know exactly how a damper works and also how it is built. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link. And for more videos just like this, the link is down there. We'll see you next time.